development. And that's kind of also my bridge to the first speaker of this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for the Rosenbauer CEO, Dieter Siegel. Yeah, thank you very much for this charming introduction. Uh, before I start with Rosenbauer and what Rosenbauer is, I want to repeat the words of the mayor of Linz. I think the Asia Electronica Center is a brilliant institution. You also see the visualizations they made for us. We work together with them. And also, uh, the city of Linz can really be a good hub for digitalization, having art, having industrial uh, support, having education, and soon having even a university. And I think we will really profit from that. And, uh, but right now, uh, we are also proud to show what we have already achieved. So for those who do not know what is Rosenbauer, who is Rosenbauer? Rosenbauer was my great-great-great-grandfather who found the company in 1866. By now, Rosenbauer is a brand, an industrial brand that stands for innovation, technology, leadership, and also sustainability. And with the RT, it will also stand for reliability, but also uh, climate awareness and uh, uh, healthy firefighting. Rosenbauer itself, close to 4,000 employees, a turnover of close to 1 billion euro, and um, 154 years of history, mostly, mostly successful. Some years we were close to bankruptcy, but they are gone for some time, but mostly very successful. We have 23 locations around the world being represented in the biggest markets of firefighting, US, Germany, and of course, in the uh, uh, center of technology, Austria. And so in total, Rosenbauer is the number one in firefighting worldwide. I think I tell you now a little bit about what led us where we stand today. Rosenbauer was always an innovation company, so we always served the market with new ideas. But in the year 2012, we made a clear decision. We want to be prepared for the things that we are not automatically prepared for. We, may, we must really look for any disruptive change in our in industry that might appear in the future. And we must do our best to be prepared for that. Because that's usually what can kill a market leader if he does not react in time to a disruptive change in the industry. And that was when we founded an, an innovation department beside our research and development to look into the future and we started doing the firefighting trend maps, looking not only 10 years ahead, but 20, 30 years. And several trends were obvious, and also several needs formulated by the brigades that the trucks in future should be different, but nobody knew how. And that was in 2014 when we started the CFT concept study. And in a very quick time until 2016, uh, the CFT was presented. It was a study, but as one official said, a study usually is comprised of some PowerPoint presentation and some drawings. What you have is a truck that can pump and that can drive. I said, yes, that's true, and we are uh, clear that we must bring this truck uh, into a serial production within the shortest possible time. And this was in 2017 when we found a red uh, company, a developing company, only designed, comprising 20 people roughly, designed 
to bring this truck into life and to make it sustainable enough uh, to serve the fire brigades. And with the great help of Berlin Fire Brigade, already in 2018, we got the first signature for an innovation partnership, which I must say helped us a lot because it shortened the time for the market launch significantly. And uh, today you will see what the results of our mutual cooperation will look like. It followed in 2019 partnerships with Amsterdam, where we are very proud of, with Oslo and with Canberra. And in 2020, another milestone with Los Angeles. Portland and Vancouver followed. But Los Angeles purchased the first European municipal truck in the US, and it is a Rosenbauer RT. This is really a sign, because usually municipal trucks don't sell over the borders. And this shows that our RT has the potential to become a world truck like our air crash tenders, the Panthers. So it might really be a game changer in the industry, and it is our duty to make the truck running as well as it looks, and you will have the opportunity to see the good looking of them soon. Yeah, what are, there are a lot of trends. So what, why I'm showing this, this was our first start. There are people who focus on the future and they state general trends. And we transform these trends into their relevance for the firefighting organizations. And we had every second year expert meetings with responsibles for brigades, with officials from the firefighting industries, with knowing people of the industry, what will be required. And we fixed the main points that will be relevant in the future. Just to name a few, gender shift, silver society, urbanization, to mention the last one, while we developed uh, the RT, the point where more than 50% of the world are living in cities has been passed. And it will be 60% in 2030, and it will be 75% in the estimations for 2050. So what looks here like the map of an underground, saying in Austria we don't have so big underground systems, but. Um, uh, shows the point that are of importance and that we included into our concept. And that is why the concept, uh, beside the emission-free driving, which is a very important topic today, but which wasn't a topic when we started, or a big topic when we started the development, we were focusing on ergonomics for the firefighters, we were focusing on agility of the truck, easy to handle, and also to handle easier in big cities with increasing population and less and less space and more and more traffic. And so I can really with proud say, out of these considerations, the concept was made and the product uh, had a very good impact with the fire brigades. Yeah, and what you can see here are some visualizations, some appetizers of the real product that uh, also show how much work was needed, how much uh, new ideas were comprised within the frame of this truck, and uh, why it will be very, very challenging for any competitor to do the same. I would even say, it's simply not possible, because um, nothing in the world is for free, of course, and it put us to the limit of our capacities, both in engineering, both on the money side, and the time to market is significant. The total numbers to be sold in the firefighting industry are ending, so it's not a big business. So um, it is really a challenge to bring it to the road. but. You can also see um, 
it is not only new from the outside. We have a lot of ideas also for the interior, for the cooperation of the fire brigades inside the truck. So it is an alarm center that can also pump and drive. Um, it has a lot of features like um, uh, that you can store your equipment where it's easy to reach, where you can easily uh, 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 handle it. So no heavy load necessary to be stored above your head and many things like that. So um, I would not say uh, we should go into too deep of all the features like Andy Zeller said today, if you ask me um, uh, to tell something about the RT and you give me one and a half hours, I might run out of time. So uh, I, won't even, I won't even start with the details, but you can see, and I want to say thank you. Thank you for the team that did it for three years. One said it feels like a lifetime achievement, and that means something. Such intense work that after three, work, three years, you feel <laughs> you have done your share of work of life. Um, it's really uh, a big, it's really, it, it really sounds big and great. And I also am very proud of these young people who were able to think new, to work new, and to start new. To mention Mr. Pence, Mr. Friedman, and also uh, Alexander Ronacher, who is the mastermind who started with the CFT, who had the idea and who fought it through, also through internal uh, um, skepticism in the beginnings. So uh, these are the, the, the birth givers of this truck and I'm really looking forward to the presentation, to the live presentation when they will come soon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, when um, a company like Rosenbauer celebrates and this impressive launch, like um, this evening, of course, that is nationally and internationally seen and honored also by Austria's politics. And that leads me to the first video of this evening. Austrian Chancellor Sebastian Kurz insisted on sending us a video message. So here we go and let's roll the video. Liebes Team von Rosenbauer, ich freue mich auf diesem Weg zumindest indirekt ein Stück weit bei der Präsentation des ersten hybriden Feuerwehrautos der Welt mit dabei sein zu dürfen. Und es macht mich als Bundeskanzler sehr, sehr stolz, dass dieses erste hybride Feuerwehrauto selbstverständlich aus Österreich kommt und somit Rosenbauer wieder einmal unglaubliche Innovationskraft bewiesen hat. Es ist schön, als Außenminister, aber auch als Bundeskanzler, zu erleben, wie stark österreichische Unternehmen in der Welt sind, dass insbesondere Rosenbauer natürlich auch ein Exportweltmeister ist und somit Feuerwehreinsätze in aller Welt, ganz gleich, ob in Dubai, Berlin oder Amsterdam, mit Unterstützung von Rosenbauer durchgeführt werden. Ich hoffe, dass wir auch als Regierung mit der Schaffung einer neuen technischen Universität in Linz und mit einem noch stärkeren Fokus in der Ausbildung im Technik- und Digitalbereich einen Beitrag für den Wirtschaftsstandort Österreich und ganz besonders auch für den Wirtschaftsstandort Oberösterreich leisten können. In diesem Sinne, es ist eine schwierige Zeit. Die Pandemie hat uns wirtschaftlich natürlich wie andere auch stark zurückgeworfen. Aber das Schöne ist, sie wird uns in Österreich nicht aufhalten. Alles Gute weiterhin. It's not a secret that sustainability has always been and of course still is a huge topic for Rosenbauer. The new RT is world's first e-fire truck. So uh, let's listen to what Leonore Gewesla has to say to this. She's the Federal Minister of Climate Action, Environment, Energy, Mobility, Innovation and Technology. Please. Die österreichische Bundesregierung hat sich ein ambitioniertes Ziel gesetzt, bereits im Jahr 2040 Klimaneutralität zu erreichen. Das bedeutet, dass auch der Verkehrssektor bis zum Jahr 2040 schrittweise dekarbonisiert werden muss und damit ohne fossile Kraftstoffe auskommen muss. Denn der Verkehr ist das Sorgenkind unserer Klimabilanz. Im Bereich der Antriebstechnologien ist dazu ein Umstieg auf emissionsfreie Antriebe, insbesondere Elektrofahrzeuge bzw. Wasserstoff-Brennstoffzellenfahrzeuge, erforderlich. 
Der dafür benötigte Strom bzw. Wasserstoff muss aus erneuerbaren Energien hergestellt werden. Wir stehen damit vor der riesigen Herausforderung, alle Fahrzeugkategorien auf Elektromobilität umzustellen. Wir haben dazu im Regierungsprogramm bereits spezifische Schwerpunkte im Verkehrsbereich definiert. Den massiven Ausbau des öffentlichen Verkehrs, eine attraktive Preisgestaltung öffentlicher Verkehrsangebote mit dem 123-Ticket, die rasche Umstellung von Flotten auf E-Mobilität zu forcieren, den öffentlichen Busverkehr zu dekarbonisieren, sowie auch bei der Beschaffung der öffentlichen Hand ab 2027 nur noch emissionsfreie Fahrzeuge anzuschaffen. Gerade im Pkw-Segment ist auch bereits eine Vielzahl attraktiver Elektrofahrzeuge am Markt erhältlich. Und wir sehen an den Zulassungszahlen, dass die E-Mobilität der Zukunftsmarkt ist. Obwohl der Pkw-Neuzulassungsmarkt in Österreich dieses Jahr aufgrund der Corona-Krise im Vergleich zum Vorjahr um ein Drittel eingebrochen ist, konnten die Elektrofahrzeuge mitten in der Krise dennoch bei den Neuzulassungen sogar um 9 Prozent zulegen. Das Bundesministerium für Klimaschutz unterstützt bereits heute im Rahmen der E-Mobilitätsoffensive in Zusammenarbeit mit Automobilimporteuren, Zweiradimporteuren und dem Sportfachhandel den Umstieg auf E-Fahrzeuge. Als wichtiger Impuls zur ökologischen und wirtschaftlichen Belebung der österreichischen Wirtschaft und zur Bewältigung der Corona-Krise haben wir die Förderungen für die Anschaffung von E-Fahrzeugen sowohl für private wie auch für Betriebe und Gemeinden mit 1. Juli 2020 daher verdoppelt. Wir wissen, umso größer die Fahrzeuge, umso herausfordernder ist auch die technische Umsetzung der Elektrifizierung. Aus diesem Grund freut es mich wirklich ganz besonders, dass Rosenbauer und damit ein österreichischer Traditionsbetrieb im Bereich der Feuerwehrfahrzeuge Pionierarbeit leistet und mit dem Fahrzeugmodell RT ein elektrisches Feuerwehrfahrzeug mit Range Extender als weltweite Innovation heute hier im Rahmen des Ars Elektronica präsentiert. Mit der Rosenbauer AG demonstriert ein österreichischer Hersteller, dass auch Fahrzeugspezialanwendungen im Bereich der schweren Nutzfahrzeuge elektrifiziert werden können. Die Rosenbauer AG, die weltweit in mehr als 120 Ländern aktiv ist, präsentiert damit Österreich als Vorreiter im Bereich der E-Mobilität und zeigt mit dem Elektrofahrzeug eindrucksvoll, dass Klimaschutz vielfältige Chancen für die Wirtschaft bietet und Innovationen made in Austria, Arbeitsplätze und heimische Wertschöpfung generieren. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad and honored that uh, the man speaking next in a few seconds is here in person again, in flesh and blood, so to say. So please give a round of applause for the governor of Upper Austria, Thomas Stelzer. Ladies and gentlemen, especially dear team of Rosenbauer, CEO Dieter Siegel, many thanks for the invitation on behalf of the state of Upper Austria, but also Many thanks for the possibility to meet the future of firefighting. It was said that Rosenbauer is an Austrian company, that's true for sure, but we are very proud that, it, that it's an upper Austrian company. And this evening shows very clearly why Rosenbauer is so successful and why it is a role model for the whole economic region of upper Austria. At least three short points. First of all, International. As Mr. Siegel said, Rosenbauer is number one in the world because of a strategy of internationalization that has enabled it to prevail in highly competitive international markets. And this represents the whole region of Upper Austria. In the 80s and 90s, our state had an export rate of about 30 or 35 percent. Nowadays, we earn six euros out of 10 by export. So we are an export region, region and we have to compete on world market and Rosenbauer is the role model for this. A second point is research and development. Being first in technology means that you have to go further and that you have to do research and development all the time. We, are, we can't be successful if we do any time the same what we do every day. We have to go and to show what tomorrow will happen. And this research and development is driven by front runners like Rosenbauer and they are successful for themselves, but they lead to a success for our whole region. And that's the reason, and our chancellor said this, so he must be true and he must 
uh, do this, that we can get a completely new university for digitalization here in Upper Austria, which will help us to be successful in further years. And a third and very, very important point is the spirit that uh, lifts the team of Rosenbauer. Even in, uh, even in very strange times, even in times of a crisis, to go further, to work together, and to have the will to be successful. And you show this, and this will, will motivate us all to do it like you and to be a successful region. Congratulations to this great step into tomorrow. Many thanks for this evening, many thanks what you do for our region, for Upper Austria, and a great success for the former years. We are very proud of you, and we will, proud in the, we will be proud in the next years also. All the best for you. Thank you very much. Some years ago, the president of the Austrian Federal Economic Chamber, Harald Mara, visited the headquarters in uh, Leonding, and he shares this personal story and visit with us in the next video. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear Rosenbauer family, I'm proud to be part of your presentation tonight, only by digital means, of course, uh, caused by COVID. But um, as you remember, three years ago, nearly exactly to the day three years ago, I was paying a visit to your R&D and production facility in Leonding and had the honor of um, driving around a little bit with a project back then called CFT, the concept fire truck your prototype of this new e-mobility fire truck that you currently are beginning to deliver all around the globe. Back then, I remember I was really deeply impressed by the whole technology you packed in this fantastic new fire truck. And I was asking, when will you be doing the next field tests? And the R&D manager told me back then, the next day, the car will be delivered to Berlin, I think, uh, to do the first field tests. Now, the final products are delivered to Amsterdam, Berlin, and Dubai. What an honor, what a great achievement. Let me congratulate you and the whole team of Rosenbauer, Mr. Siegel, uh, that you delivered so promptly, so fastly, yeah, and stick to the way in becoming more and more innovative over the years, with that Rosenbauer being one of our most successful export companies all around the globe. But I would also thank all the customers, especially the representatives of the cities of Amsterdam, Berlin, and Dubai here today, for putting your trust in an Austrian product, as you can see, putting your trust in a product that is coming from an innovation leader country. Thank you very much to the whole Rosenbauer team, and I wish you all great success in the months and years ahead. So again, big honor and appreciation of Austria's politics. Chapeau, Rosenbauer, well done. So, and now a change of subjects. Um, there is something funny and interesting at the same time. So in the pause of the last years, when it comes to which profession people trust the most, firefighters are always on top. Either they are number one or they are among the top three. And I feel if you're a firefighter or working in a fire department, that must feel actually pretty good to know that the country really fully trusts you. And Coincidentally, we have some uh, firefighters and people from fire departments here tonight who I speak to. I'm very, very happy about this. And I'd say we start. We start with Germany and Berlin. So please give a round of applause to Carsten Göwecke and Katrin Richter from the Berliner Feuerwehr. Very warm welcome again. Good evening. I think we can come a bit more to the into the light, <laughs> so to say, so that people see us. Um, very warm welcome. Nice to have you here. And Ms. Richter, let's start with you. What was the wow or the big highlights that led you to a yes, we want this new RT truck? Basically, it wasn't just about the technology it was about the idea behind it. And uh, we, the Berlin Fire Brigade, 
support strong ideas and uh, we strive for ambitious goals uh, such as a Berlin project or vision of a smart city and uh, climate protection. You know, the fire brigade lives from its values, its tradition and the people who have shaped both for centuries. The most important values, its tradition and uh, no, <laughs> are courage, reliability, and um, trust and appreciation. They help us to face um, the different challenges in a big city like Berlin. And we identify very strongly with our big city. And uh, this is a city where freedom, creativity, and science are held very high. And this is exactly what the RT is embodies. Where else, if not in Berlin, should the great idea be brought to life? The RT will improve the ergonomics and the uh, communication conditions, which were good reasons to support this project and finally to buy such a fire truck. The RT has an excellent road holding and with the RT we want uh, have cold stars anymore and uh, we won't suffer from noise pollution. This is the future. Also to get the RT is related to our partner Rosenbauer and I think in the past years we've built a trusting cooperation and we look forward to carrying out this revolutionary project with you it's highly appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kuvecke, as <laughs> Mr. Kuvecke, as firefighters, you experience a lot. Um, probably a lot of difficult, dramatic uh, situations, as well as very successful and beautiful moments. And tonight I would like to focus on the good, <laughs> because we have enough drama anyways around the world at the moment. So, do you maybe have a special positive success story in mind that you would like to share with us? Yes, I totally agree with you. Firefighters experience very special moments every day. And uh, Moments that decide between to lose a human life or to rescue somebody in the last minute. We meet people in a wide variation of situations. Mostly the people find themselves in a unique emergency situ situation they have never experienced before. What I mean by that, we share wonderful but situations but we share situations I have never uh, we, we share situations also the pressing moment every day even more we enjoy to hear that people in Berlin express their gratitude for our work we recently received a letter in which a young father described the birth of his baby daughter right in the ambulance of fire department Berlin his wife was in great pain. She was about to give birth the baby in the hallway. He was completely upset and didn't know how to deal with the situation. When the firefighters arrived, he immediately felt a deep relief. You have to consider firefighters are of great importance to the patients, both mentally and physically. This task is of immeasurable value for society at whole. A large part of the population does not notice much of how diverse and demanding the daily work of firefighters and the fire brigades. But they understand it at that moment, they need our help. Don't get me wrong, of course. In the best case scenario, people shouldn't get into an emergency situation in the first place, but when they do, we are there for them with all our heart 
and professionality. Finally, let me say, there was a happy ending. The baby and the parents are fine. We work for these moments, the feeling of being in the right place at the right time, fill us with deep satisfaction. Thank you for this happy end story. I've heard, of course, also before that event that you have dreamt about this, maybe not that IT truck already back in 2005, but of a very futuristic car, fire truck car. Would you like to share a little bit about that as well? Well, you're allowed to dream, aren't you? But yes, it's true. Actually, I remember very well, 14 years ago, we were having dinner in a forest house in Brunswick. And Julian Wagner, his wife and I, we had a lovely conservation. We were wondering, what could the fire truck look like in the future? And what will be the requirements for the fire brigades in the coming years. We agreed very quickly that we want to reinvent the fire truck. Now I'm standing here, right next to the RT, and I'm pretty sure this is exactly what I was dreaming of. I'm very proud that the Berlin Fire Brigade is the first in Germany to get this car to start, and this fire truck is constructed to the needs of the fire brigade, to improve the ergonomics and communication. The construction is based on scientific findings and the mega trend analysis. I'm thinking back to Julian Wagner quite often these days. I'm grateful that he has supported this project with so much dedication and motivation from the beginning. To release such a big vision, you need a strong team, a team which holds your back. So at this point, I would like to express my extraordinary thanks to all partners involved. Thank you very much for your tireless efforts to make this dream come true. Your energy and your good work is highly, highly appreciated. All you did, a great job. Thank you. Not only for inventing a completely fire truck, but also making it reality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you are an oracle. What you dream of just comes true a few years later. Would be nice, actually, isn't it? Um, Ms. Richter, to close this round really quickly, would you complete this sentence for me? Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Rosenbauer is a strong partner because of developing customized solutions that corresponded to actual requirements for the fire brigade. Thanks. A round of applause, Mr. Köbeke, Mr. Thank you very Welcome. much. Please sit down again. Thank you. Another client of Rosenbauer is Dubai. Unfortunately, due to COVID, of course, I cannot welcome anybody in person here from Dubai. But guess what? We have a video statement. And it's a really big honor for us. And I'm very glad to present you to General Matrushi from the United Arab Emirates Ministry of Interior. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ayyuhal asdqa al-azza. Fil bidaya, awaddu an u'abbir an shukri wa taqdiri lakum li itahat hadihi al-fursa li lit-tahadduth ma'akum an bu'd. Wa kana bu'dna an nakuna baynakum li ta'akid ahamiyat al-sharaka al-istratijiyya bayn al-difa' al-madani Dubai wa ma'a sharkatukum dhat al-khibra al-tawila fi tasni' markabat wa aliyat qita' al-atfa' fi al-alam. Li ahamiyat hadha al-qita' al-ladhi yuqaddim khadamat insaniyya 
بين الناس الذين يحتاجون إلى الإنقاذ والسلامة من الحريق الاختلاف أعراقهم ودياناتهم وجنسياتهم وثقافتهم وهذه هي القيم المجتمعية والشخصية التي نؤمن بها ونعمل بموجبها أيها السيدات والسادة الكرام يتميز الدفاع المدني بدبي بالعمل على تقليل زمن الاستجابة العالمي للحوادث والعمل على تحقيق معدل زمن الاستجابة أربع دقائق والريادة في استخدام أحدث الآليات ومركبات المكافحة وكذلك استخدام مركبات ومواد المكافحة الصديقة للبيئة ونعمل على الاستفادة من أفضل تطبيقات الذكاء الصناعي في الحماية والمكافحة وتطبيق برامج ونشاطات توعوية بمشاركة أوسع وبناء على ذلك قرر الدفاع المدني بدبي شراء آلية CFT لتوفير عدد من الخصائص ومميزات كانعدام الابتعاثات الكربونية منها وقدراتها المتميزة على المناورة بشكل أفضل من سيارات الأطفاء التقليدية كما أنها أكثر أمانا وسلاسة لطاقم الأطفاء ولقلة كلفة التشغيل والصيانة ومرونتها العالية لوظائفها المتعددة حيث يمكن تحويلها بسهولة لتأدية مهام أخرى ولأن الدفاع المدني بدبي عضو في فريق مبادرة دبي للتنقل الأخضر ولهذا نحن نتوقع نجاح المركبة على ضوء خبرة شركة روزن باور التي تعمل من بين أكبر الشركات المصنعة للسيارات ومكافحة الحرائق في العالم إضافة إلى مواصفات المركبة الجديدة والمتعددة كمركبة صديقة للبيئة ولتعدد مهامها بالقياس إلى مركبات الإطفاء التقليدية نحن في دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة نعمل وفق رؤية استشرافية وتطبيقات تجديدية لتحقيق أفضل خدمات الإطفاء والإنقاذ واستدامتها وهذا يجمعنا مع جميع الشركاء الذين يقدمون أفكار ابتكارية غير تقليدية كما هو الفريق المبدع في روزن باور 59 مركبة بالإضافة إلى آليات ومعدات أخرى من تصنيع شركات روزن باور وفي الختام لا بد من التأكيد على أهمية العمل المشترك بين القطاعين الحكومي والخاص لأنه يوفر فرص متعددة للابتكار والتجديد والتنمية والاستشراف للمستقبل بصناعات متقدمة ترتقي بمستوى الخدمات من أجل تحسين جودة الحياة شكرا لكم General Matrushi, shukran, which means thank you. So, the Netherlands are in the house as well. So, welcome Amsterdam. A round of applause, please, for Officer in Command Paul de Jong and Communication Advisor Lena Jarsfeld von Brandwehr. Welcome. We would be very happy, yes, if you join. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Lena. Very happy to be here. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you. Um, could you also, whoever wants to answer, give us um, an insight in what made you say yes, that you really want to have this new ERT truck? Uh, the main focus for us was we, we want some innovation. We, are, we want to be innovative in the fire department in Amsterdam. Um, the city of Amsterdam also have uh, some quite uh, really sure emission goals for the forthcoming years. In the, in the year of 2030, they want uh, the city center with zero emission, of course. Um, and the most important thing for us with this truck is um, that it's built from ground base uh, as a fire truck. Besides, of course, that is electrified uh, and it work, it's working towards zero emission. Now it's still hybrid, but we are getting there. 
Um, you, the sustainability, yeah. like Paul's saying, it's not only about the uh, environmental part, but it's also about uh, the people that you that work are, are working for you. So uh, people of different age and strength and gender can all be part and, and, and very easily have access to the equipment. So that's a very big improvement for us and uh, part of the sustainability. You are communication advisor, right? I said that correctly. So maybe you can give us a brief insight of, I don't know, what, what is good about that job, what is easy, or on the contrary, what is difficult? What are the challenges being a communication advisor in the fire department? <laughs> well, um, of course it's a challenge, but I think that everybody who's working uh, for a fire department or a company knows the challenges. Uh, we are operating on a governmental field and also looking ahead what's coming and we want to be um, prepared and participate on what's going. So uh, I think uh, being part of that and being part of the company and um, looking ahead and thinking uh, to the next step. And I think this, uh, this is a very um, clear example of that looking ahead. Could you maybe also, because we always want to speak about tonight, of course, these behind the scenes stories, so stories that are not written in the internet, stories that only you can tell us because you experience a lot again every day. Um, do you have maybe also a story in mind that you can think of that you would like to share with us? Maybe a story that has recently ha happened and had a happy end. <laughs> It should have an happy end, okay. Um, uh, of course, there are a lot of incidents in Amsterdam. Um, uh, uh, normally, I would talk about uh, the cat we rescued last week from, uh, from one of the trees in the city center. But uh, I think uh, there are several stories I can tell. And, and one of those is that uh, last year, uh, of course, in Amsterdam, we have a lot of water in the city center, a lot of canals, and that, that gives some problems sometimes. Uh, and last year, uh, in a day, a, a car drove into one of the canals, and um, our dive team was, of course, responding to that incident. Uh, and they were checking the car, if there were any people left inside of the car, or that everybody was outside of the, of, out of the water. Um, and after a few minutes, when they were really checking, really uh, checking the, the car um, in the back, they found a girl who was completely gone to the back of the car, and they were able to get her out of the car. She was hiding there. No, yeah, and she was already the, underwater, yeah, right? She so, underwater, so she was a few the minutes. Was underwater okay. in the canal, but uh, due to the impact of the incident that the car hit the water, she was, um, uh, yeah, she was thrown in the back of the car. Uh, so nobody could see her anymore, but our dive team found her in the back of the car, got her out. Of course, she went to the hospital. Um, but after a couple of days, uh, our dive team, the members of our dive team, uh, were able to visit her in the hospital, talk to her, uh, and she could thank them because she survived. And that was a really good story. And uh, yeah. It just gives you a boost of yeah, know, for joy sure. and yeah, it makes sure. sense what you do, right? Yeah. So thank you very much. Bedankt. I think that's the what I've <laughs> correctly said. And guten Abend. <laughs> I try my best to speak Dutch. Thank you very much. That's your applause. Thank Please have you. your seat. So what Rosenbauer has achieved as a leading company in Austria and around the globe is very impressive. And it's a really great example of what can be possible if there is a vision of creating something together. A short RT truck making of movie will show you a little bit more, will take you behind the scenes. And for me, I only say, let the movie roll, please. Die Rosenbauer waren die Hauptgründe für die Entwicklung des CFD. Die große Frage, wie wird, wie wird äh, Feuerwehr in 10 oder 20 Jahren funktionieren? Wir haben gesehen, es braucht eine, eine neue Plattform. In Zukunft müssen die Fahrzeuge leichter bedienbar sein. Die Fahrzeuge müssen in Summe kleiner sein von den Abmessungen und natürlich auch im Einklang mit der Umwelt stehen, das heißt auch abgasfrei fahren können. 
grundsätzlich sprechen wir ja bei, der, bei dem Entwicklungsprojekt von einem Gesamtfahrzeug. Das heißt, äh, geht los bei einem Antrieb, Fahrwerk äh, über die Gesamtaufbaustruktur bis hin äh, zur Elektrikelektronik. Es war für uns 2016, wenn wir das Fahrzeug das erste Mal der Öffentlichkeit vorgestellt haben, natürlich ein großes Fragezeichen, wie werden die Kunden, wie werden die Feuerwehrleute reagieren? It's definitely the vehicle of the future and I'm massively impressed by it. So a future firing vehicle? Yeah, definitely. First impressions is very impressive um, in what you've managed to do from electrical point of view plus an innovative point of view of the layout of the cab etc. Very, very, very impressive. This is really fantastic because it has a uh, very small turning circle, so it's much more manoeuvrable uh, to help people to get around. It's got a good space inside so that people can talk. Uh, it's quite quiet. Das Fahrzeug ist einfach anders als wie ein normaler LKW. Es ist wesentlich stabiler auf der Straße. Es ist viel agiler. Das heißt, die Beschleunigung ist einfach besser. RT ist das Serienfahrzeug. RT steht für Revolutionary Technology, beschreibt eben den RT als Produkt. Wo wir beim CFD primär im Fokus hatten, einen Technologieträger zu bauen, einmal äh, hat, haben wir nun ja die Herausforderung, äh, Fahrzeuge zu bauen, äh, die mehr oder weniger multiplizierbar sind. Das heißt auch die Produktionskosten, die Fertigung, die Montage muss so gestaltet sein, dass das ohne Probleme vonstatten geht. Man kann sagen, vom CFD zum RT wurden alle Hardware-Komponenten getauscht. Es geht von der Federung los über das HV-System, über den HV-Lieferanten bis zu der gesamten Achsgeometrie. Das Kundenfeedback war natürlich enorm. Und uns hat es stark geholfen, herauszufinden, äh, welche äh, Funktionalitäten für die Kunden besonders wichtig sind. Wie zum Beispiel Ergonomie, der permanente Allradantrieb und der niedrige Schwerpunkt. Vor allem äh, das Arbeiten mit dem Team rund um den ERT bedeutet besonders viel Freude und äh, seit Beginn an äh, sie fast ein bisschen wie ein Lebenswerk anfühlt. First of all, it's emphasizes the leadership that Rosenbauer takes and it's a pioneering product into this area. But second, um, the, for us as a partner to Rosenbauer, it's so great to see what the teams have achieved together. I think it's been a really, really good collaboration between the teams that we can merge our technology into the vehicle of the Rosenbauer and that we have a common goal. I'm really, really proud of this cooperation. Together with Rosenbauer, we can develop a product that's much more competitive for Benefit for Rosenbauer and benefit for Volvo Penta moving forward. So I think that's a challenge, but it's a very positive challenge to take on. Es ist gerade sehr schön, wenn man bei so einem großen Feuerwehrhersteller arbeiten kann und einfach wirklich maßgeblich da die Zukunft mitbestimmen kann. Und ich denke mal, wenn nicht wir, wer kann es dann machen? Ja, super. Also mein Meilenstein, den wir wieder geschafft haben. Ich kann mich noch zurückrennen beim CFD, wie wir den Meilenstein gehabt haben. Und das ist einfach ja, ein Moment, den man nicht so schnell vergisst. Super, ich bin echt stolz auf das Team. Respekt an die Kollegen. Gewaltig, was wir geschafft haben, gemeinsam. Der RT hat eine wahnsinnig große Bedeutung für Rosenbauer. Es ist ein Meilenstein in unserer Entwicklungsgeschichte. Es wird ein Benchmark sein in der urbanen und kommunalen Feuerwehr. Es ist ein Fahrzeugkonzept, das zu 100 Prozent auf die Anforderungen und Bedürfnisse der Feuerwehren hin entwickelt wurde. Es ist ein Fahrzeug, das kompromisslos nur für die Feuerwehren gebaut wird. Oh wow, it is um, yeah, for me really very amazing to see and incredible how many people have been involved in this project from all over the world. And that's why I'm especially glad to speak to some of them, to speak to the protagonists of this project, to the project team. So really now a very, very, very loud applause please for Michael Friedman, project owner. 
Edmund Pence, Chief Engineer. Come on. <laughs> and CSO, Andreas Zella. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> so if again I see this move, it's incredible how many people have participated, how many emotions you see, how much expertise comes together. So honestly, how exciting, how exhausting were the last three years for you all? Very, very exha exhausting. So we had, uh, I just want to mention two, your play is not working. Uh, very exhausting. I just want to mention two big steps for us. Uh, this is a photo from the first step. Uh, where we had a meeting, the first uh, project meeting we did, and nobody knew really how should we uh, create the next three years. And so we put all our uh, stories together, we created uh, 2,500 story points, we evaluated them, and then it was somehow clear how we can at least survive the next month. And then we worked simply uh, from month to month to month, and you see it here in this burn down chart, that uh, we uh, accomplished our work. And we're here today, there's still a little gap open at the end, as you see, so we are not done yet, but we also need the help from the fire brigades to finish the job. And there is a very important second point. Uh, I want to mention Berlin here. Um, maybe we get also a slide, uh, uh, some pictures from Berlin. Um, this was important for us uh, to be there to get uh, the recognition and to get finally also the trust uh, with the innovation partnership. So this gave us a really big motivative step. And you see here uh, the Berlin truck. Today we will see it in a much better condition, uh, but this is on our testing ground. We see also pictures from the signature in October 2018. Thank you for that. have to switch back. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can put it in a pocket, exactly. Um, so let's talk a bit about the truck, right? That's why we are here tonight. So what are the highlights, the, the wows, what's special? So often mentioned today, we can talk hours about it. I will just, uh, I will just, uh, yes, okay. Uh, I will Thank just you. talk about the main ones. We have connectivity. It's maybe not the f most important point, but what we see and uh, the fire chief of Hamburg said once, the only reason why he would buy the truck is the communication in the cockpit. So I want to emphasize here, it's not only connectivity in a digital way, it's also the connection of the people. So we have the crew cab where all the people can sit together and we, everybody knows that the nonverbal communication, for example, is very important. And the commander, like Paul, can just have a turn back and see uh, how, the, how the crew is uh, behaving and, and how is the condition of the crew. One topic. The other topic, of course, mentioned by Dieter Siegel already, sustainability. So this is getting more and more important now. Also with COVID, we see how fast the things are changing, the climate crisis is there there is a biodiversity loss coming for us and we all need to work towards this, this direction. Another important topic is of course uh, the safety. This is the most important point for the firefighters. We were asking them, what is the most important thing for you? This is the health and safety of their team. Um, yeah, uh, Michael is putting some, some slides on. Uh, ergonomics help in this respect, but also the driving uh, condition of the truck makes it more safer. We have a deeper uh, 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 center of gravity. We have a better curve stability. So the driving is already safer. And then finally, we don't have this uh, uh, folding steps anymore. So there are a lot of things which help to prevent uh, uh, that the firefighters get into any troubles. Yeah, I, uh, and then, uh, of course, we have uh, another important uh, topic. This is... Um, uh, this is this is all around all around the efficiency of the truck. Yeah? Uh, of course, now it's a little bit more expensive than a conventional truck, but we have to compare it with an electric truck. And then there is almost no gap anymore, and we have energy efficiency in the truck, and all the health and safety around it. I think will also play a big, uh, uh, important uh, impact on the on the efficiency of the truck. Okay, so that's my keyword for, whoops, that's loud. Yeah. <laughs> so now you really hear me, okay. <laughs> um, another personal story ah. coming from, yeah, ah, there was something, right? <laughs> so the keyword 24 hours, Amsterdam operations, what happened there? Yeah, this was a very, 
very important step for me personally. I'm not a firefighter and had the honor to join uh, the Amsterdam team for one for one day, for a 24-hour shift, Paul showed me also the other uh, fire stations. But this is important for a product and project owner to really experience what are the needs and requirements of the fire service. What are what, what the stories? What Mr. Göwecke and Paul explained. Yeah, so I could also see some of them. We were driving fast uh, through the city, so I knew that we cannot make a truck which is simply only beautiful. It needs to be really tough, yeah? Uh, I don't know how often they change the wheels and tires in Amsterdam. I think every two or three months they need to change them because they go on the middle of the, uh, of the rails to be fast. And then there was this accident and uh, it was not easy for me to observe it, but it was um, very impressive how quiet and how uh, concentrated the team is working. And this gave us, gives us also the the real need that we may have a quiet truck nearby so that everybody doesn't have this noise pollution which simply increases the stress. So for me, this was the real important part, but uh, finally maybe we see the nice uh, Wiener Schnitzel. Uh, the Amsterdam team cooked for me a Wiener Schnitzel and I really have to say it is the best Wiener Schnitzel I've ever had outside of Austria. And I have to say thank you for this again, Paul. A memorable Wiener Schnitzel, obviously. Danke, Michi. Thank, thank you, you, Michael. Thank you. Danke. Edmund, you are the chief engineer, which means that your world is everything around the technical stuff. Yes, and absolutely. I guess, I mean, I'm a lay person. I don't know anything about techniques, um, but I can imagine there was the one or the other challenge <laughs> in this project. Maybe you would like to share a little bit about it. Yes, uh, but before I answer your question, I would like to show you uh, the main components of this truck. Uh, what you see is a pure electrical fire truck. Uh, the the, the drivetrain itself is uh, consisting of an uh, electrical machine uh, combined with a two-speed gearbox um, powered by a uh, high-voltage battery. Uh, this high-voltage battery is big enough that you can cover more than 90% uh, of all the normal or standard uh, um, firefighting missions. And if you have a uh, bigger scenario, an overlength scenario, we have the range extender on board, which gives you the possibility to drive this uh, truck endless. So now back to your question. Uh, from a technical point of view, the biggest challenge was to find the right partners and to find the right components. So when we in uh, 2017 started this project, nobody, uh, yeah, we, we did, it was not really clear if these components, what we expect, are already available on the market. So um, that's the reason why it uh, 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 was the biggest challenge. And I would say today, uh, it's the perfect moment to, to say thank you, uh, danke, and Taxo Mücket uh, to our international partners. So then I continue with the thank you because the thank you is a special moment, right? Do you have any other special moments maybe to close your talk? Anything highlighting? Besides the team, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, you heard already something about uh, yeah, my personal feeling and my personal highlights in this uh, project. Um, over the last years, the whole Rosenbauer organization uh, was supporting this uh, project. And uh, to be honest, my biggest highlight is to, to be here, to be on this stage today uh, as a representative uh, of this uh, fantastic team. Thank you, Edmund. Andreas Zeller, hello. So we know already, of course, that Dubai is one of Rosenbaum's clients, but told me before that Dubai is the first non-EU client of Rosenbauer. Maybe you would like to say a bit about it, to that. Exactly. So if you hear the name of Dubai, then it is clear it's standing for innovation, for high-rise buildings, for explore, for future technology. So it was not really a big surprise that Dubai 
was the a candidate to be the first RT customer in the world outside of the European Union. But let me tell you a very personal story how I experienced that. Um, everyone has his start into the RT project somehow. And for me, it was the very first moment to do a presentation of the RT technology in front of a customer. I tried to prepare myself very well. And after 30 minutes, I s had said everything what had been said. Big mistake. The following two hours of discussion showed me what has to be considered with this overall new concept. And uh, so I learned definitely more from their side, from the discussion, than maybe I conveyed information from my side. But this shows, and this is a very perfect example, how we understand and consider relationship with our clients. It's not a supplier-client relationship, it's a partnership. And this partnership is a partnership, a place where we develop together, where we solve problems together, and where we grow together. And thank you for Berlin, for Amsterdam, and for Dubai for being representatives of this world of fire departments. Let's also mention a few other countries and cities. Keyword demo tours throughout Europe and US. You've also been to LA, right? Mm -hmm. So stepping over the Atlantic Ocean is by far the biggest step that you could imagine if we talk about fire truck technology. Sometimes I used to say that the chemistry of fire must be different in the US as the standard is so distinctively different from the European one. It's not a question of better or worse, it's simply different. And uh, when we tried to make a first approach, uh, we thought maybe the Bay Area, San Francisco, Silicon Valley might be candidates to listen at least to a concept based on a very much European looking truck. Uh, the rumors that we had visited the Bay Area even reached uh, Los Angeles Fire Department and there's a very nice smile from the fire chief, Ralph Terrazas. Yes, thank you very much, Ralph, for your support. Uh, definitely, when we, we, Wade White, the deputy vice president, uh, deputy fire chief, called us and said, guys, we need an electric fire truck. We have some sort of budget. We want to have more information. It was quite obvious that we want to invite the fire department. They came to Austria. They saw the technology. They saw how the guys were developing the product, and they were very much convinced. So we are very proud. It's yeah. the very first fire truck from Rosenbauer ever delivered to Los Angeles Fire Department. The tour, uh, maybe I need to mention one more, the tour was the beginning at that time and then we continued first by uh, presentations and later on by a real demo tour when the truck was shipped over to the United States. And I look in this direction because Steve did a great job in presenting and giving the chance uh, of grab and feel because seeing is believing. And of course there were some voices talking about, oh, we like the tradition, you know the American trucks, maybe we continue. But I never forget the discussion in Vancouver when one gentleman addressed this, how shall I say, um, reluctant position and then the fire chief said, you know, I like the traditional way of building fire trucks either up to the moment when I cannot come around the corner. And this was something which was really an eye-opener and we had many, many experiences in this regard and I'm really honored that we can not only serve European and U European standard uh, customers but also the North American customers with our track. Well done, it's very exciting and interesting to listen to these stories. <laughs> more, 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 but we don't have time. So, last question for this round. Um, let's look a bit into the future, what we always do. Um, keyword vision besides world domination, of course, for Hosen Power. So what is the vision? So maybe I started the other way to say what will maybe remain the same. And in 2030, I'm quite sure that we will still fight fire with water and we will still carry the water to the incident with some sort of vehicles. But I think digital solutions, uh, the support of IoT, uh, measures like uh, Internet of Things, like drones, uh, communication, connectivity, incident command system controlling the operation. They will very much manage in future uh, the operation of fire departments. And all that is started and maybe the RT is the milestone now is the first chapter, is the door opener into this future, which will be an electric future, which will be a zero emission future and a digital uh, new era.
an e-era, so <laughs> to say. Okay, thank you very much, Andreas, Michael, Edmund. Thank you. Your applause. <laughs> thank you. Schön. And I see when I look at the time that we are actually super in time and on point, like only one minute ahead. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, let me officially start the show part. We have talked so much about the new RT truck now that we finally want to see it. Right? Yes, <laughs> nodding. So, it's showtime. As you can see, the trucks are about to leave the headquarter, and yeah, that can happen. <laughs> and this is important also to say from my side now, everything you see from now on is really live live. So we have this live connection as soon as something is live. You know, of course, that things can happen. That's an exciting character of a live connection. So we will see where it takes us. So the trucks are, again, now leaving the Rosenbauer headquarter in Leonding. And these are the trucks, ladies and gentlemen, three of them coming towards us in the convoy. Dubai, Amsterdam and Berlin rolling towards our Electronica Center here in Linz. And uh, it will take them around like, let's say, 15 to 16 minutes until they are here and touch down the Arsene Electronica Center. Okay, we can see that the weather is a bit rainy and we will have a live connection, hopefully, in a few seconds to the first truck, which is the Berlin RT truck. Yeah! Hi, guys! Hi! So that worked. Perfect. Hi Berlin, here is Linz, <laughs> hello Jens. Hello, hello Katie, live from the RT Berlin. Yeah, good to see you, good to hear you. Would you like uh, to give us a short introduction so we know what's your name and what's your position please? Yes, you already told it, my name is uh, Jens Klink, I'm from the Berlin Fire Department. And um, at the Berlin Fire Department, I have two areas of work. Um, 
And the first part, and the main part, um, is uh, my work as a yeah, um, officer of engineering, and um, I plan and I obtain uh, vehicles for the Berlin Fire Department. And, um, and the second part uh, of my job is um, the part of uh, head of uh, operation in the uh, Berlin Firefighter First Response, uh, Emergency Response. Uh, yeah. How is the feeling at the moment on a scale from 1 to 10, if 10 is the best, okay? <laughs> How do you feel? Oh, I think 11 is okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say I, I, feel, I feel proud. Uh, I feel proud to sit here in the truck. I feel proud to be, be a part of this project. Um, yeah, and I feel proud that uh, I can bring in my experience as a firefighter, yeah? And uh, at this point, I want to say thank you. Thank you to the team of engineers the, who um, developed this vehicle. And uh, yeah, I want to say thank you that I can sit in here tonight. Jens, we thank you. Thank you very much. And bye aus Linz. You are here in a few minutes. See you later. Jens, Klink, thank you. Schön. See So, and what you see here again, of course, are impressions from the streets on the motorcycle. So, his name is Alois, by the way. Alois shoots uh, the impressions on the motorcycle. Is it impressive already? Actually, it looks cool, oder? Looks cool. So again, they started in a headquarter in Leonding, which is the production headquarter for everything. So every vehicle you see, even also the robots outside, of course, is developed, produced, manufactured there in this headquarter with more than 1,000 employees, which is really impressive. And unfortunately, I cannot hear anybody in my in-ear. So I will um, do this by feeling. <laughs> this is the Dubai truck, if I see correctly. It's so much rain. <laughs> the weather god is not so much in our favor today. But we will have the next truck with me, which is the Amsterdam RT truck. So let's see if the connection works. Good evening. Ah. <laughs> Good evening, Linz. Really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Linz, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you okay. <laughs> I would love to see you in, yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi, Barry. <laughs> Barry, hey, Amsterdam, how are you doing in the new RT truck? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. A big achievement from Rosenbauer. I'm very proud. Also proud. Um, what do you look forward the most, honestly? So is it like a big um, dream come true for you? Uh, it was a long, uh, long way to where we go, uh, where we came from and where we're going to. Um, yeah, for sure. We have a long way to go. But it's great. It's just great. Barry, tell us, um, in which fire station will the truck be tested? Uh, in the first place, it will go to the, uh, the one of the busiest fire stations of Amsterdam. That's called uh, Station Hendrik. Station um, Hendrik. This is also the station with... Yeah, Station Hendrik, also uh, the station with the most narrow streets of Amsterdam. Oh, okay, so <laughs> something uh, difficult, sounds a bit difficult at least. Yeah, it is, it will. But the guys are very happy to get the car, so uh, yeah, we I can't can wait. <laughs> I can imagine, so Barry, thank you very much. Um, we see you soon also here in Linz at the Ars Electronica Center and have a safe trip until we meet in a few minutes. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.
went back to the streets, <laughs> back to Alois. He really, he records all this stuff you see live, live now in front of the trucks, behind the trucks, round about the trucks, so actually everywhere. Brandwehr it is here in the pictures of the RT truck Amsterdam. And I think in a few seconds, we will already be with the next truck. And the convoy can't be that far away anymore at the moment. So, oh, this is the sign for me. We are with Dubai in a few seconds. Here we go. Hello, RT Truck Dubai, Martin. Good evening. Hello, good evening. <laughs> good evening. You're smiling all over your face. Can I tell that you're very happy <laughs> to sit in this new RT truck? <laughs> yes, yes, that's definitely true. <laughs> Tell us a bit um, about also as well, what are you looking uh, forward the most with this baby under your body? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so excited to join this, this first test drive, uh, the first public test drive of this vehicle. And actually, it's really an honor for me to join this uh, test drive on the behalf of my customers, Dubai Civil Defense, as they were not able to join uh, the launch event due to COVID-19. Martin, if you would have to describe this RT truck in one word, <laughs> think wisely, what would it be? I guess something like bombastic comes now, or fantastic, or something like that. One <laughs> word. <laughs> so the RT is? Yeah. In my opinion, the, the word which is describing the vehicle is already part of its name. It's revolutionary. Cool. Revolutionary, that it is. Thank you, Martin. And see you soon in a few minutes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, they are almost here. are really here within the next minute. So see you soon outside on the main deck.
Hello, make some noise, please. How do you like it so far? Yeah. Isn't that incredibly exciting? So the new RT trucks are literally only a heartbeat away from us from here. It's amazing. And you see it's, or it looks as if it's raining pretty heavily, but I have to say, actually, it's not that bad. It's better than we thought. <laughs> it's better than it looks. <laughs> we are not getting wet. <laughs>
So these are the new RT trucks from Rosenbauer. What a wow. Yeah, well done. Well done. So that was their first successful ride, so to say, from Leanding to Linz. One more applause, everybody's out, all of the teams. Let's go. Yeah. So, Michi is my co-host, as you can see. <laughs> you know everything about the project and about almost. the RT, almost. <laughs> That's enough. So the rest knows Edmund. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest now that everybody is here that we officially hand over yes. the trucks to the clients. Should we? <laughs> yes, and I yeah. would suggest we start with Dubai. We start with Dubai. First, let's start with the board. Yeah. Huh? Let's get the board here. So give a round of applause, please, for CFO Sebastian Wolf. CTO Daniel Tomaszko, CSO Andrea Sella once again, and CEO Dieter Siegel once again. So, so we've heard Dieter and Andreas already. That's why let me shortly talk to you two, if that's fine. Um, it's really unusual to talk to you with the mask. No, you can leave it on. It's fine. It's fine. Outside, <laughs> it's fine. anyhow. <laughs> um, how do you feel? I know I asked this question quite a lot tonight, but it is, I guess, a very emotional moment if you see this. So uh, how do you feel? Absolutely. I get goosebumps. Uh, like I got also goosebumps when we introduced the new Panther yeah. to 215 and we, when we showed the CFT in 216. So this is the, I would say, third goosebumps moment for me in 12 <laughs> years uh, working for Rosenbauer. The third goosebumps moment. What about you? How many goosebump moments have there been so far? Yeah, there are for sure some moments in your life you will never forget. And when you see how many people are here, so we are very proud for our new products. And yeah, I, it's hard to find words to get it in, but yeah, we are proud, proud, proud. An almost speechless Daniel <laughs> can I say that so let me come to you one more time I mean yes you've talked already but I think it's such an emotional moment please Dita please Andreas share some emotions words with us still yeah it is incredible to see all our people who achieved such a great thing and who are so proud and the customers are proud and of course this carries you even to be more proud than <laughs> anybody else and I say thanks to everybody. This is really an incredible moment to see these trucks dancing. We said it's like the horse riding school in Vienna. Uh, just the jumps we have to practice a little bit. But it was a, it was a big, big feeling, yeah. yeah. Would you hand it over to Andrea? For me, it was more than exciting when uh, Edmund mentioned just half an hour ago that in 2018 we were not even sure which components we were going to build into the trucks and we started to promote the trucks already in 2017. <laughs> so now I get nervous even in retrospective. Uh, but it's amazing and to have this product, to have these uh, magic moments is part of the, of the Rosenbauer history and of the future. So thank you very much and I'd say please you stay here because again Michi will also help us with all the clients' representatives, and we officially hand over the trucks now to the clients, I would say, right. So we have a symbolic key, I think, to hand that over. Yes. Okay, that's <laughs> the symbolic Dubai key. <laughs> or the e-guitar, <laughs> as you like. <laughs> So please, would you stand for a nice picture as well in front of the truck with the whole team so that the photographers can get all the pictures and images they want? Otherwise, nobody leaves the space. <laughs> Proudness in the faces. Smile. Smile, smile. One, two, three. Marmelade. That always works, usually. <laughs> team? Team. The truck team. We need the truck team. Yeah, the whole team, the truck team. Please, to the front. To the front. To the front. <laughs> 
And I know it's unsexy, but please keep the distance a bit on the pictures so that we do not get in trouble. <laughs> So, question to the photographers and the videographers. Do you have the picture in Kasten? Super! <laughs> You're relieved. Thank you very much. And congratulations. <laughs> and next is Berlin. Please, let's... <laughs> let's hand over the Berlin key. So the whole Berlin team, please come to the truck, to your truck. And also again, keep your distance, please, but smile. <laughs> Everything done, dear photographers? Yes? No, okay. Keep standing, please. One more picture. Pictures are the most important thing, so we have to do it perfect. Thank you very much, Berlin, and congratulations with your new truck. And last, but not least, Please, Amsterdam. Dieter Siegel carries the Amsterdam official handover key <laughs> for the new RT that rhymes. I was very happy and smile for the pictures, please. Do we have everything? I think you can move again. <laughs> I think they have the pictures. So let me, let me just <laughs> shortly ask you just one last question. How happy are you? I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really, really looking forward to uh, start using the truck in Amsterdam yeah, and see what it will do in, uh, in practice and operations. Really great. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Let me also get another statement of Berlin. Berlin, Berlin, hello. How do you feel? I feel great. Thank you. I feel great. great. Uh, we, we work for over three years now. Um, and uh, yeah, the idea in Berlin to, to make an electric fire engine uh, was born in, I think, 2016, Mr. Goewicke, when I, I'm right, that uh, we want to go active yeah, to make uh, uh, such, a, such a project. And uh, yeah, now this, the product is here and uh, we are very happy about it. I can imagine. <laughs> very impressive. Thank you very much and congratulations. And last but not least, uh, Dubai. Happy, proud, whatever else. You're smiling all over. Too much happy and too much proud, yeah. Too much happy and too much proud. That's nice. Never heard that before. <laughs> Martin, good evening. Thank you. I'm Chris, but it's also fun. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the last of fat in the last seconds. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much. And actually, actually, we are at the end of the official part of this RT launch. Is there anybody else who wants to say his last words? I mean, not forever, but only for now. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you for standing in the rain for this big moment for us. It is a milestone in our history, maybe in our professional life, and hopefully many more things to come innovative things, good things, and thanks to all of you for contributing and for being here to join this great day, this great moment with us. Thank you very much and have a very safe trip home. Thank you. Thank you also very much from my side, from our side, and my last words are, may the Rosenbauer Force be with you. Thank you very much. Good night.
And the trucks will leave us again in a few seconds. But of course, until then, you can take pictures if you like. You can go there, you can kind of touch it <laughs> and have a little bit of fun with the trucks.